What's up, YouTube? Kyron, and this is the Let's Name This Later podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Remy. You going know crazy. It. Sorry if I was allowed. Oh, my God. I don't know where that came from. We need that anyway, energy. We need that energy today. I took yeah. a Red Bull to the dome before we got here. So got does that, that shit work on you? Going. Red Bull? It, mm, I guess so. It kind of does. Caffeine itself, like in coffee, mm. doesn't work with me. But in Red Bull, it does for some reason. Whoa. Yeah. But what about other energy drinks? Because I feel like most people, they're no. like, oh, this one doesn't do anything to no. me, but this one really I works. try not to have other energy drinks. You're a Red Bull guy. I'm a Red Bull Just guy. Just Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, I mean, as a kid, when I was like skating and BMXing and stuff, like Rockstar and mm. like, Full Throttle, that's just horrible for yeah. your body, though. Really, it's, it's <laughs> I mean, none of them are good, but like, I don't I think mean, it's even good for vehicles. Like, yeah, if you put that no, shit in that's a that's like room. jet fuel. It's insane. Yeah, man. I, I saw this very interesting video about how Red Bull makes its money, and it's basically a marketing uh, yeah. company. Like, they, yeah. I think they invest something like over 43 to 50 percent of their annual budget on marketing, marketing alone. Like, yeah. it's wild what they it's, do, and they just sponsor things that they know no people. matter what it is. It's crazy. And fun fact, it's, it's not a drink. It's actually an Asian drink that a white dude bought and remarketed for, yeah. like, the Western world, basically. And it didn't have that appeal before at no, all. No, the good part is, is that he did go 50-50 with the original owner. Mm -hmm. So that guy, the guy that invented Red Bull in Asia, is also, like, a okay, that's gazillionaire fair. now. That's fair, that's fair. But, uh, but they do yeah. invest in everything, you're right, because uh, High Classified's girlfriend... Lisa mm -hmm. ended up uh, got getting sponsored out of nowhere for esports. Oh yeah, I saw that's on, it, yeah. on social media. Yeah. That's crazy. Makes a lot of like sense. they just in, like they invest in every type of marketing. Every single design. sports, yeah, extreme yeah. sports, or whatever you want to call them nowadays. If they're wearing a helmet, let's yeah. put it that way, it'll probably yeah. have a Red Bull uh, sticker Literally. on it. And that was the way. That was how I was with Red Bull originally. I just thought of it as like mm -hmm. a sporting situation. Right. I'd yeah. even like partake in the drink because i didn't even know what it tastes like and i didn't know like what i would use it for eventually like i remember I mean, the urban legends about good. you know mixing it with alcohol yeah, at yeah, the beginning yeah. people were like can you people do, do this that all the time now? now that's now my like, drink that's yeah. a horrible drink to get tasty on but like, but i mean it's it's it does the job it's balance you know it's the yin and the yang of going exactly. out like <laughs> you gotta go up and get and turn to the left exactly you know what i mean so <laughs> anyway um, starting off with the first segment of the podcast yeah. after getting sidetracked a little yeah. bit, it's all good. But uh, fit check. I'm going to mm. start with the fit check. I'll go first. The top, I'm wearing garden party. Oh, you're a narc. You go top to bottom. I'm doing Shout it. Shout out throwing fits. But I'm yeah. flipping it. I'm flipping it today <laughs> just because, you know, you got to save the best for yeah. last. Yeah, true, true. Today, today. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But the top, Haven Court. Fire. I am a narc, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> top is Haven Court, the fitted that he made. Shout out mm. to Keezy. The TV shirt i think that's what he called it but mm. from garden party i don't even remember what he named it and spencer badu trousers and yeah. christos i didn't forget Wait, today yeah, yeah, yeah. i did not forget today. sick episode five we going crazy to fire fit and the usual silverware yeah. yeah i actually updated the jewelry horrible story what? rest in peace to my baby chrome hearts pendant i lost it going out with megs Ooh. i took her out to dinner well, she she actually took me out out to dinner. She decided to pay for it this time, nice. but which is nice of her. Shout out to Megs. Mm -hmm. But I was walking home, and then I just feel something dangling on my tee, and it was my chain just loose. And I was like, Oh no! Oh my god! So the, well, that's the a sign that we're out. actually back to yeah. closer to regular life. If yeah. she's trying to lose stuff going yeah, out, literally. Oh think about god. that. You, you could not have lost it in the past nope. year and a half, but no. now it was literally after going. To a restaurant and i called the restaurant they said i didn't see it so i definitely lost it on my way home how much did you think that i mean i'm not diminishing yeah. it whatsoever but it was the size of it was a small it so was for, a small for a small it, piece it pave diamonds, though. that's fire how much do you think it increased in value from when you got it to now it must have at least I tripled mean, the retail of it was like from what i've been told was like a thousand okay because it's silver with the pave diamonds but and who knows how many they made yeah i mean i mean i see a f few people with them i got them from rd archive which is romel yes he sells uh, a lot to the travis he had a huge like thing that. recently eh? i didn't i don't yeah, know what yeah, panned yeah. out but all the Last best time. he's a super cool dude and he's, he knows he's an encyclopedia insane for his shit. he knows his stuff he's if really you like what travis into, wears you like what he likes exactly. <laughs> so. if you're big into travis scott's closet rd archive it's, and it's the same thing you're in you're into the same thing you're basically the same thing so just tune into him mm -hmm. you'll, you'll definitely find what you want but so you got I it got from him yeah. set from him i got right. the big cross which i still have thank 
Jeebus. Jeebus, yeah. <laughs> Jeebus. Um, but yeah, I got my big one from him and the ma- the baby one. But uh, the baby one's probably like a thousand, and the big one's probably like two point four. Yeah, so, it's just no joke. You know, that's crazy. But I think it's a forty ounce or something. It's like your chrome hearts don't have chrome. Like, what's the point? That's exactly. you know what I mean. Like, no, no, not to diss the shirts or whatever, but it's cool to like get exactly. what they're known for. You know, yeah, like that's what I wanted to get as the first thing. If I was gonna get something, mm. that was my first thing. It was gonna be like the jewelry or like the the heart, the hardware, mm. so to speak. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, that they have that like that chair that flips o- yeah, up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they have like uh, a bench that turns into X Y Z. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, they are. I mean, they're good at what they do. Exactly. They know exactly but what anyway, they're doing. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. I'm not crying over it. It's material mm. items. Food was good back. at the restaurant. Yeah, it was good. Blessed meal. You know what? Full circle moment. I was like, karma is gonna come back into light at least after. So like, I lost my wallet. I lost my Goya wallet one night going to get ice cream with megs a week later i was like bro this is the worst luck ever what's going on and then the police called me the next day i didn't even realize it was gone i Whoa. got a call from the police and they're like hi kai work is this you i'm like oh, my heart dropped i'm like what the <laughs> when they use the full on? government name like, you're like, uh, I was like yo what did i do and they're like um we have your wallet at the station I'm like oh my what? god I was like red wallet because i was like watch them take it out right, and put right, it into right. another one <laughs> yeah. and it was there so I was like, that's okay. amazing. I lost one, one of the very rare bro. good police phone calls you, you can have in your life. Literally. That's amazing. Do you fit check magic? Uh, yeah, JW Anderson top. Fire. Uh, very crispy. Just distressed jeans. Let's not mention the belt. Everybody has this belt. And the classic crystal. Nice. I like the repairs on your denim, bro. Respect. Those are sick. Yeah, you got it at some point, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you want to distress for real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So first little subject, I just got to vent real quick. All right. Because I finally, which it ended up being all right, uh-huh. but I bought something on April 28th and I only got it this week. Like, you know, when you buy something, you're like, it'll get here eventually because a little bit, bit of a peak. I recently moved. So switching addresses, mm-hmm. but you're like, I knew I was moving in the, in the month of June. Yeah. I bought the things. In April 28th, I'm like, oh, I can put my current address. There's no reason in the world why I wouldn't be able to just get You're them. Like, it's going to get here. Like, there's right? No way. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So I wait like three weeks, get the pair in. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a cool moment. Unboxing, it's always fun. And then I'm like, yo, shit, this is a big box. But Jordan, you never know. Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll give you a humongous box for no reason. Then I look at the tag and I'm like, hmm, this is not right. So basically, instead of sending me a women's 12 and a half which is a men's 11 because mm-hmm. you know how nike they're doing more and more of the unisex yeah. tags yeah but if it's a men's shoe the men's size will be on top and vice versa anyways i think the person got confused that they sent me a men's 12 and a half so oh, like they're boats they're, i have yeah. no use for them whatsoever there's no resale value um, so it's not like oh just get him flip him and get your size exactly. afterwards with some change no one's buying that exactly yeah. like well i mean even then the shoe dipped because mm-hmm. they re-released 15 times in that in that span but so i have to ship him back so i email them and they're like yeah you can ship him back but you're gonna have to pay duties again when they come back so that's another 50 dollars that you have to pay when they get here because here in canada you have to pay basically 30 percent duties on imported yeah. goods like that yeah so I'm like, okay, whatever. I guess I'll, it's either that or you just get a refund and that, that's, that's no good. Like, you still want the shoes, yeah. right? So I'm like, okay. And they're like, yeah, you're going to have to ship them out. We can't get somebody to pick them up. Like, it's not a pickup thing. You have to go to a specific, like, the closest to, to your neighborhood. But you yeah. have to drop them off, print out the shipping label. At least they, they took care of paying for that shipping label, at least. Yeah. But yeah, and eventually they get, and they, no word of a lie, they came back the day before I had to move. Like, that's how long it took that's to finally insane. get them. Yeah. Wow. But I got them. They're amazing. The quality is really good. That was good. straight from Nike, though? From Amamania. Yeah. From oh, Amamania. Yeah. Okay, from their from website. Yeah, so I think okay. that's maybe the reason why maybe. it was a bit more complicated. Because yeah. I don't know if they've ever dealt with that much traffic and that much, you know. There was something new People for looking at them, you yeah. know, in that also, specific way. Also, Jordan's sizing has always been super confusing to me. From, like, youth to grade school to me. Right. This is, like, especially with Meg's buying into shoes now mm. she's oh yeah she's, she's getting this, into like, it yeah she's getting into it a bit more now especially like what's she, she into she likes she likes dunks now a little bit she like she likes ones but she's kind of like picky she doesn't like fours too much she doesn't oh, like wow. threes um 
sixes, nines. She doesn't like. So she's much. like developing her sneaker. Yeah, she's taste developing. More and more. She likes. She she went the opposite way though. She went from more like high end and like slides and stuff like Sui Cokes mm. to getting more into like the. That's actually super interesting because most people will go from around. sneakers to like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then again, the high fashion is just ripping off those sneakers exactly. that she's now into. So it's exactly that's amazing. But with that's her, it. it's like she has a particular taste when it comes to the. With like the uh, Jordan ones, for example. Mm-hmm. So she knows a lot of the men's ones that they put into GS or youth, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. They'll like almost make them look like mids. Yeah, the, the shape will be that, different. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it's- then all the women's ones are high cut, like how the men's ones are. Mm-hmm. So like she's kind of limited to what is accessible to yeah. her because she wants it to look like the high. She she doesn't want it to look like a mid. So, yeah. It makes no sense. Honestly, it's shoes mid. should be unisex. It, it should, should just be, be a size one. and a width thing. Like, yeah. a shoe should come in, like, two sizes, I think, width-wise, like, regular and large or whatever it is, mm. narrow and wide, let's yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, exactly And then like regular pants. sizes, just, like, European, it's all the same size, like, from, you know, you, you just keep counting up, basically, yep. and that's your size, yep. which makes way more sense, but, I don't know, it's kind of like... The U.S. is still using their like the feet and all that. No <laughs> offense, because I'm sure most of the people watching are from the states. We use but you know that side, makes no buddy. sense. Like when you're the only one in the world doing it, like, and it's not. Anyway. Listen, Perfect. hot Tangent. take. Oh. Hot take. Meters are dead. I mean, feet is dead. Meters are in. Yeah. Hot take. Kilometers. Kilometers Get the miles are out in. of here. Miles out of here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Celsius is the king. Right. Fair. No, Kelvin. Part. I'm a Kelvin guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of wild, actually, that when you think about it, most of the world will agree on that, but America's mm. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Did they Mine even is. invent? Uh, I don't know. Who invented that? America's, <laughs> wild. America's wild right now. It's about to have a crazy summer in America. Shout out to them, though. Their vaccine roll out way better than ours. I'm not going to lie. Shout out to Rolling Loud, man. It's oh, my God. Crazy. Yeah, that I need to experience is, that once in my life. I feel, I feel like right now is probably not the right time. I yeah. need to know more about the people that invented Rolling Loud. That too. They need to do like a mini doc or something. Not a full ass doc. Yeah. Like, I'm sure if like... Cause you I know, know what? Cole Bennett and them should mm. just like do something together. Because I know he has his own festival. But like if he documented right. like their right. lives and like maybe did something together. I feel like they'd profit more if they did something together. They could as, definitely. But I mean, they, on their end, they already have the largest hip hop uh, festival in the world yeah. and it's it literally happened it didn't happen overnight but it feels like in the public eye that it happened almost overnight mm-hmm. you know and yeah it's good to see that it's coming back man but it's i don't know if you feel that but sometimes i almost feel like there is a bit of after going through all of covid of like not like a fear of normalcy like it, it yeah. doesn't feel right to go back to normal even though that's what we've been wanting right. this whole time that night at the restaurant with uh, when I lost the, mm. the pendant, mm. that was the night that I, I think it was the first time I went into a restaurant and I, I asked the waiter if it was okay to take off my mask. Right. She's like, how else are you going to eat? And she yeah. was laughing at me. But I was like, it just didn't feel right. No, like, that's what I'm saying. Weird. You get used like, to the new yeah, normal so yeah. fast. But man, I just I just want everybody to, you know, just push through a little bit longer yeah, and yeah, I think man. we're going to be good, you I know. I think so too. We're like turning the corner. It's happening yeah, fast. Slightly. Then we're going to. Apparently we're about to be in the green zone, Remy tells me. Yeah, so yes, I'm, I'm skeptical, but you know. Well, I mean. I got my, I got my wishes high. So it's going to be good. I mean, at this point, it's, it's almost a personal thing of like mm-hmm. getting fully inoculated and then just, you know, going with it and. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, I do feel like a lot of these things are just good to be, like, sanitary. Yeah. Like, just a bit more sanitary. I'm mm-hmm. not saying, like, wear a mask for the rest of your life. Not at all. But, like, wash your hands more often. Yeah, definitely, dog. I, w- right. I personally, not putting the blame on anybody, I <laughs> am washing my hands now yeah. more than I used to before. Yeah. Like, it's not like, I'm not saying I'm, high, like, high and mighty. But it's like, just... I updated the what's in my bag. Like, now I carry, like, right. the, the sanitizer, the yeah. hand cream, you know. You got to stay again, sanitary. And, when the first episode we mentioned it, like, all these things, all these measures are way more common in the East, yeah. like in Asian countries, co- because culture. they've gone through it before. So mm-hmm. this is just new for us. But yeah. it's, man, I'm happy that it seems to be going better. So I just wish everybody stay healthy, Same just keep here. pushing and we're going to be good. You know, something not so good in my mind. Talk about a segue. Eh? We're getting used to it. <laughs> the 50. The 50. The Real 50. Real quick, because... We have love for, for Virgil, I want, if, if I may say so. Because I, I like a lot of what he's done. I personally like his stuff as well. He took the 50 and, and keeps on, he keeps on getting 
buried out with the the number 50, eh? Yeah, 250 is like, <laughs> I mean, but he did not help himself with the whole comment beforehand. I couldn't make up, I couldn't make up, uh, I couldn't dream of 20 worse colors or something like yeah, that. That yeah, comment yeah. he made with, that, was with that render. Yeah, yeah. But what do you feel about just those? How do I feel about it? Mm. I mean, it on the outside looking in, it is very like blatantly like lazy, so to speak, if people want to say that. But is it a cat? I feel like it was more of a play from Nike being like, what can you do mm. that's good monetarily for us that you could push out multiple units of and that you don't have to burn out your creative flow mm. too much. Work on the colorways. You don't have to do too many model remaking. The dunks are hot right now. Mm. Everything's pretty like vintage esque, and it's very wearable. Everyone's different materials, different, different materials, shades, you know. So it still plays into the realm of what Virgil likes, where it's like the deconstructed mm. stuff, raw materials that are going to age over time and patina. It's still instantly recognizable yeah. as uh, just like the. Nike. I mean, he did the university pack before, but yeah. essentially mm-hmm. they just added the holes to the to the tongue and stuff. Exactly, right? exactly. So what I think is that. Obviously, everyone's going to eat it up, but like people are hating on it because it looks like it's lazy on the outside looking in because it's 50 mm-hmm. of the same shoe, but it's not the same shoe. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I have more of a tin hat, tin foil hat on than mm-hmm. this. I think it's because, as you said, it, the dunk has been going crazy. Yeah. They've been releasing all the colors in mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. I think straight up, it's Nike scraps. It is. That they're like, because all of the 50, like number one and number 50 are different. Like the actual white and the actual black pair. Yeah. But 48 of those motherfuckers are the same except <laughs> different materials so and a different color tag. Mm-hmm. I think Nike had scraps from all the dunks they made. They tinted them different colors. Some of them is suede. Some of it is leather. Yo, some of it is uh, if that perforated. Was the case, they should have played off that to like play into this whole like sustainable recycle and all recycled that. thing. But they would never it would like devalue the whole off white, yeah. high end yeah. aspect of it, that's you know? True, that's true. But, uh, yeah, so I've, that's my, because, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what it's like to produce a shoe, especially not on their scale, mm-hmm. but to whatever level you start producing things, you, you have excess material, you have scraps. You it's must, inevitable, yeah. yeah. And when you quantify that to this, a company the size of Nike, you can make a nice little batch of shoes and be like, yeah, yeah, let's just put some suede in that one yellow, <laughs> that one blue and uh, traditional. And like it's, it makes sense to me. It makes sense financially. Mm-hmm. I feel like it could be a bit of a, maybe a last hurrah for Virgil and Nike in the sense that it's like, well, I mean, the twos just got announced as well. But at a certain point, does this collaboration end? Yeah. Like, like shouldn't what, it end? Where does it end? You know what I mean? Because it would be nice to bookend it. Because, you know, the other day, I, c- I can't remember who, which sucks because I would love to credit the person that took the shot, mm-hmm. but I saw, I saw just a very nice like, shot of the off-white, uh, the original Jordans, the Chicago. Oh, okay. The Chicago off-white yeah, Jordans, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Which at this point are not even, they're not even a thing. If I think the Travis Scott ones are a meme, this is even more, like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, more, that's like it surpassed the level of shoe, you know? Shoot. But when you just <laughs> look at it and what he did to that Chicago... It's amazing. Yeah. And if you were to have limited to the 10, I think it would have been up there as the, you know, the landmark moment in sneaker history. Whereas now I think it's kind of bleeding towards. Scraping like, the bottom of the barrel. Well, it just. Because um, that, that. Kind of like the Rolling itself. Stones, you know, they keep, yeah. keep going and keep going yeah. where it's like, yo, you're just doing the same things like, at a certain it? point. Like, yeah. give it a rest. I like, feel like that collab. Like the ten itself will mm. solidify itself as like one of the top tier collabs, like you said. Yeah. But everything in excess afterwards, yeah, is definitely tainted. Yeah. Has tainted that legacy a little bit. Mm. But if you isolate what Virgil has done to like segments, then you could kind of leave that as yeah. a really golden moment, and then everything right. else is kind of like you have to pick and choose what you. I like. think it, it'll gain its uh, its lore back mm-hmm. once it's come to a generation that didn't experience it yeah because yeah. they weren't around so they'll mm-hmm. just look it up and be like oh wow that 10 is like the initial pack because you know it kind of gets lost in the shuffle afterwards the whole mm-hmm. timeline of mm-hmm. it all but you remember uh, how it started so i feel like that's when people will be like oh shit that shit was actually special that's as fuck. a perfect like, example of like i wasn't like what well, like well off enough to partake in like the whole pharrell migo era mm-hmm. with louis but like i can now but like it's still a lot of money, but like I still would want yeah. 
let's say the the 1.1 version of the the millionaires you know yeah. just to like nostalgically have that moment because i remember back then being like looking at monogram uh, flash bags and like all this shit like being like yeah. amazed Yo. amazed yeah, it's amazing did you and, do you know who solely ghost is on uh yes I mean, yes yeah, yeah yeah i do yeah. that dude had louis vuitton bring a goddamn <laughs> truck to his house to shop yeah. on father's day that's crazy. i mean dear lord <laughs> like I've, levels i've never even heard of something like this that's, that's absurd it's so totally crazy absurd. to think but then again it's kind of probably it could be in a way the future of like gorilla pop-ups in a way yeah, yeah. for like luxury boutiques because their clientele now is it's getting younger and younger mm -hmm. you know more and more people know about lueve bottega veneta all these like luxury brands that are really more of a niche in the sense just because mm -hmm. they're, they're the numbers that they produce it's not and the entry level it's all very like rare to just to be able to have access to it yeah so i think that could actually be very like avant-garde in a way for louis vuitton to be like you have all the money in the world plus i'm sure that they calculate that if we bring a motherfucking truck to your house you're probably going to spend a bigger bag than if oh you just God. come to the store Easily. you know and and like the marketing that you get from it already and like the repost value mm. they just realize that marketing goes so much further into the like into the consumer and also the the influencer if you want to say mm. like i would never in a million years thought that like dior would see the product to like certain people you know yeah. I, i watch well i follow wisdom on instagram he's like the, like one of the more more fashionable guys on tiktok i would say okay like, okay i don't even go on tiktok like that but wisdom is like up there like like definitely crazy but money must be insane right? yeah no TikTok, like, yeah, yeah TikTok is i think it. even like vogue made a post about him like probably the most fashionable mm. uh guy on, on TikTok. okay but he's a dancer he, I'll, no I'm no no not even just, just, like, a... just a style guy okay like, he takes like almost editorial like photos but like on iphone he's and one of those like multiple fits when you're yeah, moving yeah, yeah, like crazy stuff like that yeah. really, like the He, he like did like rock paper scissors with himself type thing and then goes to the beat type thing so, you love, I love the creativity cool. yeah, honestly really creative like good editing like that's why I admire it because like the editing that goes behind it and like changing in, in and out of outfits like it's the same process as YouTube just in like mm. a more condensed condensed yeah. situation but anyway with Wisdom like he got seated uh, a Dior side bag like yeah. the other day and I was like that's insane that's yeah. so crazy I mean well okay so if you could get seated from any brand in the world Mm. what would you pick honestly like th like louis from version really yeah i think it would just be like a really big like damn moment. Like, i just want cartier cartier would be nuts because like everything is i just know cartier just rarely does it like you that's what i'm saying i don't even know if they do it i don't even you have the model for cartier to, yeah. for them to but at this point it. they're just paying you and they did it in with a different Willow way. smith recently I think, wow. because she modeled their recent campaign i think so yeah yeah that's the only way you get free credit i think that's yeah. that's i mean because yeah. it's it's almost all investment mm -hmm. at this point you yeah. know the market is crazy is it though. private like elmez i so, don't know who owns uh cardia that's a great question hmm. actually i wonder i wonder what group i wonder are. if it's still uh, house operated it could because i mean you don't see like flagships everywhere no no you so really wow yo, you just gave me homework <laughs> was, that's dope because i like that I next like episode yeah that. yeah okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna know more about that exactly. who founded it mr cartier was born in 1912 i, ju I just seen that uh did you end up following uh samato uh, samaroto or whatever after oh, no no yeah, i have to send it to you yeah after, yeah yeah, yeah, he yeah did like the history of the crash watch after mm. tyler were in the number right yeah, yeah 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 so he talks about kanye post. having one yeah kanye has yeah, one he talks the... about kanye because like the two booms of it being in modern culture right, right. was like when Uh, Kanye wore it with uh, David Letterman. I believe, the, yeah, his, yeah uh, his like closet, whatever that show is called. Yeah, like uh, so. my next guest needs no introduction exactly, or something like that. Exactly. So like that was a surge of it, and like the price went up of the watch, and then also again like literally in Tyler's video, you see it for like maybe a second. If you can freeze frame it, if you can freeze, frame it's going it. to increase the value yeah. of that. Even yeah. though it's already, I think now banana. it goes between it floats between 150 to 250. Yeah, but I mean watches is is ridiculous. I mean. Uh, Is it Matt uh, that's in oh, watches? Matt Ferrante, you saw the, the chart of things that were... Like yeah, no, I, I, I follow him probably yeah. the same accounts yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. he follows, but, like, he has impeccable tastes in watches. Like, he, he knows does. exactly. He does. But, yeah, I think we mentioned last time, what's happened with the Nautilus is mm -hmm. just ridiculous. Like 70 to 100. <laughs> that's crazy. 
the Drake effect, maybe? Nah, 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 nah. nah. It's not steel. the Drake effect. Stainless yeah, stainless steel, steel watches are going for more than gold one. For gold ones. Like, a Rolex is harder to find in stainless than in gold. Insane. Market's crazy, man. No, no sense. Yeah. I wonder, you think the bubble will pop? Has to. I think it has to. Not right now, but Thank eventually. You. People are just going to be happy. Flipping stuff. Like no, because it'll pop when the brands try to catch up. Yeah, you know what I mean? When they open up, yeah. that's the that's a problem. People aren't I mean, thinking of that right now. Because like right now, even like a Pepsi is insane. The Hulk, don't even think about mm-hmm. it. A bad girl, the smaller one. It's, I mean, it's. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Matt. He yeah. knows his shit. Shout He's out to Matt. fucking. If if anybody in Montreal needs a watch, hit him up. Go, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, I want to eventually. Eventually, yeah. we're gonna get into we'll, that. We'll get into. It. Um, have you seen Travis his new uh, campaign for Bottega? No, I didn't. But you want to talk so, about it? So yeah, it. into it, it here. here. Tra- uh, any tra- type of Travis content, listen YouTube, okay? I have to put on some type of blurry type of effect or VHS what? footage because they copyright everything, Travis. Say Travis, word. Okay, okay well, listen, never mind. Travis, then he okay? shot some stuff. Listen, Travis, mm. I like you, okay? Let me, let me live with my podcast, our podcast. Yeah. Let us rock. You got to have the footages for people mm. to provide context, okay? Let us live. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> He was no, but he was he was uh, shot by the great uh, David LaChapelle. Crazy, legendary, legendary uh, photographer. Right? Yeah, I mean, from like late '80s till now, mm-hmm. a lot of legendary shots. I mentioned uh, before the pod, like the Whitney Houston album cover mm-hmm. where she's in gray. Yeah. Uh, most recently, Dua Lipa's most uh, the Vogue cover she yeah. did. Uh, Doja Cat's album cover, That's like incredible. you name it. He's probably worked with them. Yeah. It's just legendary, and it's. It's so cool, the whole behind-the-scenes aspect of it. That's, like, when you get to levels of, like, Bottega and Travis, like, even the photographer is a goddamn legend there, mm-hmm. you know? I'm sure the catering was on point, like, all that stuff. And that is part of the reason why the prices are so crazy and all that. You pay to be a part of, of it all, you know? Whole, in, like, this whole life. Like, that's what branding is, and that's what a lot of people have to understand is... The reason why a, per, a person like Giz, Giz or Gizmo that mm. wants to like start calm aware and everything like that, if the pants are at 490 and you can't justify that, it's because like you, you're buying into his world and the people that are associated with, with that world. Like that's why he sends pads to like I mean, me and like yeah. and, and Ray and, and Fuego, and like Joel, I mean, it's like these are the people he, he feels like represent the brand mm. and he wants to cascade that image of what he sees Kama wear to be. And it goes yeah. the same for Bottega. It's like... But he's creating people. a Veblen good, yeah, basically. Exactly. He wants it, like... The way you price your item is a part of its entity, mm-hmm. in a way. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it says something about Along it. Along with the quality of the good, right? So Definitely. Like, yeah, but, but, like, that's the... At a, at a certain yeah. level, you've plateaued on quality, mm-hmm. and you're going off above and image down. and literally just... You knew, you know people would not buy it if it was cheaper. Exactly. Because there is that whole, no motherfucker, I paid for this. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Same lobster. Lobster used to be given to prisoners. Now it's worth a lot because we price it a lot. People think it's fancy. And, but if it exactly. was worth a, a, a tenth or a hundredth of what it's, it is now, people no, would not look can't. at it. It'd be like, oh, Gruz, they're, they're just big bugs. You know what I mean? But sell that shit for you know 100 bucks a pound and mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you want to eat it with a monocle you know yeah that's how you create you know <laughs> it's just because okay. humans are like that in a way we are in a lot of ways elitist mm-hmm. you could call it like it's it's survival in a way but people in, look at this the podcast world. as elitist sometimes like all we really? talk about is like i mean some some people i would say i wouldn't say the vast majority love us you know no no appreciate but, the pod yeah but like at the end of the day we are talking about like luxury fashion and like watches and, and yeah the better, but the whole point of it is in life but this is what we but do you enjoy. notice that we are not necessarily wearing yeah. or yeah. like we just because you are talking about, and you could just consume it in this way with the podcast is the way you're consuming that good in itself like, exactly you're part you're partaking in the lifestyle without having to yeah me talking about yeah. watches with you mm-hmm. on the pod with the people interacting the instagram it's and the all experience that of everything yeah i know it's not the same as getting a rolex but you are still engaging that part of your brain that likes the watch mm-hmm. so that's why we talk about it yeah. to me that's why we're doing it and 100 percent, i feel obviously most of this stuff is superfluous but 
most of the people that are lucky enough to listen to it live in a world where they can yeah. think about other stuff than survival. Like, if you want to talk about how fucked up the world is and how, like, inequality is insane yeah. and all that, yeah. it's a never-ending cycle where you could always do more and you could always be more conscious mm -hmm. and be more elevated. But this is just a way for us to highlight some of the things that we like, yep. some of the things that bring a bit of, you know, uniqueness to our lives. Because it's audience. so much of it is all the same and... It's very easy to get bogged down and to 100%. be like, we should all be just, you know, minimalist eating rule, you know, just to get the calories and just fuel and save the planet and all that, which if that is your mission in life, more power, more to, power you. to you. However, I feel that 99% of people, it's a pick and choose thing. You like your stuff, other stuff you don't care at mm -hmm. all for, where you could be, you know, like it, you could be all the more responsible in different ways, but just because you don't care about it doesn't matter. No, no. We like fashion, we like these the, like luxury Veblen goods or yeah. whatever it is. That doesn't mean we're not conscious about the other part of it. Oh, you know, there's room for both. 100%. And I feel like we have. Our first episode's about COVID. I, I, didn't, I don't even want to like... But because criticism is valid and it it's is. cool. And it I do agree with the essence of their critique, if you mm -hmm. want to say. But I feel like we do a good job of framing it in a modern way and in yes. a way that is digestible whatever your price point I, we've never told people to like drop shit just get high end yeah, or whatever yeah. it's like it's we've always never, been more we've of never said like we're not trying to gatekeep or like tell everyone no, to the, buy quite the opposite this like yeah. like it was it was commenters that taught us about capital yeah we were talking about it yeah. i would not have learned about it without that. you know talking about it here exactly. so it's a it's an interaction it is more of a one way mostly mm -hmm. but we look at the comments people interact with both of like it is still a community aspect exactly. thing at the end of the day and that's why i like talking about it same same but that's hey, why everything's good in like moderation and yeah. also time and place time for and everything. place and mm -hmm. knowledge knowledge is very important you know what i mean so knowledge is power yeah yeah especially when it comes to sustainability and stuff like that too like i'm, I'm not preaching to anyone to like buy xyz like, I'm not telling anyone to, you have to have this. Mm. I say I like it. If you like to partake in that, then you could go ahead and do that. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you could have all the clothes in the world, but still use, you know, public transportation mm -hmm. and, you know, eat extremely healthy mm -hmm. and, you know, do your part as far as uh, overconsumption and all. So it's like, okay, you could, you could do the whole, oh, it's so wasteful, all yeah, the clothes yeah, that yeah. you buy. How could you not recycle all that? But it's like, yeah, but what about all that other stuff? So... Yeah. To each his own, definitely. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we are like kind of getting into the meat of it all, which is yeah. a good segue. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole like sustainability and thrifting, because a lot of the people like I feel like, yeah. especially with it being so popular nowadays. How do you feel about thrifting? I, I mean, I'm I'm a big thrift. I used to be a big thrift guy. I used mm -hmm. to like go thrifting pretty often, especially right before COVID. I mm -hmm. would say like Makes sense, yeah. I was like. I was in the thrifts all the time, but then it reached a point where I was acquiring a lot of items that like, I felt like I was good at. We're good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I was acquiring a lot of items that I felt like I was happy with in my mm -hmm. wardrobe. Like I had a good basis and I felt like I didn't have to keep on overly consuming anymore right. at a certain point. And then I chilled off of it for a bit. Then COVID hit. I even, I chilled even more because yeah. it was like, you couldn't even do that. And then eventually I started getting even more into true vintage, I would say. Okay, describe and that. True vintage is anything that's actually in the era of vintage clothing. So right. like true 90s, true 80s, true uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, all of that. You know what I mean? So um, that goes hand in hand with like, if you want to call it like the elitist like vintage community, which would be everyone that's super knowledgeable and has that actual single power stitch to date or nothing yeah yeah exactly <laughs> literally single stitch or nothing so like everyone that's knowledgeable enough to know what is what some dudes will look at a t-shirt and be like yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. twelve hundred dollars yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the next one on the rack ten bucks <laughs> like it's it's such a fun. it's a science really yeah. like it's about because they 
it's like they literally know how the cotton will mm-hmm. deteriorate, yep. how long it has. Yep. Like, oh, these holes means it's been used this the much. Stitching pattern, the cut of the T-shirt, uh, the type of uh, embroidery, the type of screen printing that's on the shirt. You're able to mm. depict which era it's from. Like that, that was what was so amazing to me. And then after that, um, that's when I kind of started to like slow down on thrifting because the odds of me finding mm. items like that were very slim. Mm. So I'd rather go to curated selections and and get things that I actually want based on that. So, yeah. I feel like, to me, the smaller brands are like the new vintage. Because mm-hmm. vintage, also, the, the price points for the good stuff has gone ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you're, you, you couldn't get something brand new from a, a designer yeah. f- for the same price. The same like, price, it's yeah. not, you're not doing it for the financial aspect no. of it. No, no, you're no. doing it, I, I, I think, more for, like... Uh, not necessarily nostalgic because a lot of people that they, they weren't around like you no. said for the time it's really more of a kind of like a, like a, a history and how because it's a rare the older the more rare and the more you know the, the the less other people will be like knowledgeable on why this is special so exactly. it'll create more value for you because mm-hmm. you'll see it in a different light so i think that's more of the thing but for me it's almost like I'd rather just get something because there's so many smaller brands that are coming up. I don't want to say small. Let's use up and coming up instead and coming, yeah. because there's no point in sizing. Like, it, <laughs> But like brands that are now with the internet, with ease of manufacturing, with like how much the world has become smaller in a lot of ways, you can start a brand much easier than 10 years ago, let's say, you know? Yeah. So is it is it like where i am i'm like would i rather just go through what i see as a hassle of filtering all these different pieces gaining the knowledge about which is actually worth the mm-hmm. investment or which one knocks the most checks of what i like in a vintage piece yeah or do i get to and i've been heavy on this in a lot of episodes or do i just support the homies mm-hmm. give what i call an artist a chance to feed themselves feed his passion give the chance to also you could gain in the sense, like, if you look at it as an egotistical way, like, you could be on the ground level of something that eventually, if it explodes, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, if true. you have one of those OG Pyrex hoodies or whatever, you know. And you're up above the wave. Or, like, so people that collected Supreme on the early, early days. Like you? Yeah, no, I'm talking even before even me, before like, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, motherfuckers that were there f- almost from the jump, you know, yeah. let's say 95 on, you know. Exactly. Like, like, that dude that was able to amass all the decks and oh sold at Sotheby's for two million. That's insane. Like Then he sell it to a museum? Sotheby's did the uh, No yeah. no no that's a different uh, that a different thing. Guy? Like the, okay. that was just an exhibition. Oh it was just an exhibition. Or it could be actually an exhibition that then was sold. Oh, that could have been the okay. way it went down. I'm okay. not sure. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. But uh yeah so that's that's also kind of like the selfish way to look at it to be like oh i have confidence that this will grow into something that has a lot of potential For sure. and who knows where it'll lead yeah. and again i really mostly see it as like hey you're getting something you like while supporting something that's not that will actually feel your support let's say you know 100%. so and thrifting there's an aspect i want to know your take on this because it is something that i've heard before but it's like, oh, save it for the people that can't afford. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've heard about this, like, all the time. I wonder I, I wonder a lot of people's uh, opinion in the comments about this because I feel like it's very split between right. perspectives. I have one word. Yeah. What do you Uniqlo. Mean? Uniqlo. Literally. If you can get something at a thrift store, yeah. you can most likely get a white tee or whatever yeah. socks. For the around the same price at Uniqlo, yeah. it'll be brand new. Yeah. So what then you know what i mean exactly so for me like some people think that if you're partaking in buying vintage clothes i mean buying thrifted clothing Mm. you're taking clothing away from those who need it but i know that there's an abundance of clothes on this earth like there's Mm. not we're not gonna have a shortage how much clothing have you personally given away like I give clothes more than away. enough for you maybe, to get something. Exactly. Like, so more than enough. Like, the I give away clothing yeah. maybe every three months. You're still plus, and you're plus or minus to get into sports yeah, talk. Yeah, you're yeah. still plus as yeah. far as how much you've given 100%. versus taken. So yeah. th- there is more nuance than just oh, leave it for the people that. No. It's no. like I I understand because at the essence of it, you have to. I believe that it comes from a place of good. Like mm-hmm. hey, 
these people don't have a lot. Why are we going into a place that is, for a lot of people, it's, the only I don't want to use the word place. shame, but yeah. it's like, I don't have a choice, motherfucker. Yeah. I'm not here for the style of it. I'm here because yeah. that's what my budget gets me. Exactly. And that's valid in a way, but also, we're all humans here. Like, yeah. you're not being disrespectful by going into, if anything, you're treating them like a regular ass human, yeah. which is what they are. Yeah. And you're just getting something. I'm not saying like, move out the way, old lady. Let me get this dress. Like, <laughs> nah. It's not like you're buying the product from the thrift store, taking it away from that person that wanted it and reselling it to that person because that person's not even in the same. And who's emptying out thrift stores? Who's like leaving nothing yeah, left yeah, yeah. on racks? It's like, impossible. It's, it's impossible. just... And, and, I, and I challenge anyone, anyone that's on the other side of this conversation mm-hmm. that's like, oh, I, I still think that we are taking it away. Mm. Just think of it like this. Like if look into rag houses, anyone look up a rag house and look at how many clothes they get and have to sift through in order to put it into a thrift store mm. and then tell me if there's a shortage of clothing. Cause there's not, there's way too many clothes. Right. Right. So like, it's and if we're being real, yeah. pressure your government to do more for its communities that are undervalued Facts. instead of telling people not to thrift. Facts. Straight the fuck up. These guys have all the money. <laughs> like, come on. And the control over the donated clothing anyway. So Yeah, like, anyway, I don't want to get into a whole rant, but because it kind of goes back to the comment uh, previously that it's like, we talk about real shit too. Yeah. Like, w- there is a link between all these subjects yeah. where it's like, like, we Even just... Even if it's fashion, yeah. it gets real too. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that initial comment can be very you know not playful but banal in the sense that there, uh, somebody is just saying like hey i just feel like it feels wrong for me to go into a village de valeur here in quebec or mm-hmm. anywhere a thrift store anywhere and just i feel like i'm taking something away from somebody else mm-hmm. very valid but then again we just had this conversation that led to this point where i'm like yeah but you could also do much more yeah. to feel good about like yeah. helping the undervalued in your community than not going to a thrift store mm-hmm. you know so it's it's about exploring the subject more than your your initial thought you know mm-hmm. which is an exercise that i love to do with with, well. with most subjects you yeah. know because it's like why are you thinking this initially right because you've because you think they should like get more or have access to more that's a community thing that needs to change on a bigger level you know so overall yeah don't like i'm not saying like, just just be chill like just be a <laughs> normal human being when you're shopping that's all it is really that's all it takes and again another you buying stuff at that thrift store makes it stay open longer so that other people can buy stuff because they're going to close down if nobody buys that shit, you know there's a lot of ways you can look at the same situation I swear, I so swear. just if you're responsible and you think before you buy i don't think anybody can tell that's you anything that's you've it. done more than enough when yeah. it comes to clothing based in the world that we of, live in based on both of our opinions like that's where we stand and then yeah. like, i'm curious to see what if you, you feel guys a different think, way that's yeah, awesome sound you're in the comments because i'm totally valid curious, you know? yeah like, let us know for real yeah yeah because again somebody in the comments could say something that will really give me a new perspective yeah. and will change and how i see it opinion is valid, and yeah, yeah that sure. that's just awesome you know so i'm down for that i feel like it's a good conversation to have so definitely let us know Same here. which kind of goes into the whole thing about like making clothes yeah like should you think we do we need another brand basically do we need another brand uh i mean yes and no mm-hmm. like like i said before there is so much clothes mm-hmm. on the planet that you don't need another brand but if you feel like deep down it's your purpose so to speak Mm. that might be very vain but everyone's path in life is different i feel like to me like my purpose was like clothing and product and uh my take on perspective and and like in content or like Mm. uh art direction things like that right so if i strip that away i feel like i'm not able to do what i was meant to do Mm. so for that same person that feels the same way as me then why why would you do that to them? I feel like then that person's need is to make a brand, you know, right. is to make a product. And we don't need more products, but does it make for more like-minded people that grow a community and makes life better? Sure. Mm. Same thing goes for like technology. Like, do we need efficiency? Not really, but it makes life better or like more livable. Mm. And, I think you. I, I think you have to evolve all yeah. the time. Yeah. It's it's always about 
the youth will always win yeah. first of all that's a fact and yeah. also like when it comes to like you said technology design brands whatever mm -hmm. You all, I, I, I agree with you again. It's like, like yeah. this wasn't planned that we yeah, would no, no, agree no, no, no. on these subjects. We don't, we don't like uh, spitball before the podcast. We just get into we it. We just so. get the subjects and yeah. then we roll, you know. But the way I see it really is that like, if you were to say that you don't get RAF, because mm -hmm. there was plenty of clothes before. You don't get you don't get all the all the stuff that you like. You don't get riot, riot, riot. You <laughs> don't get none of that, you know. So. so it's like, and plus, who knows when the next big thing will come from like who like how what 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 is it even going to be i don't know but that's the whole beauty of it mm -hmm. all is that you never stop creating you never stop you know making new stuff to me that's always and for every brand that gets up there's unfortunately a brand that you know stops yeah be being you know yeah, so yeah. it is very cyclical and like you said the the whole creative aspect of it all where like for some people it could just be clothing but trust us when we say you know it even better than me i feel yeah it's more than that to a lot of people yes. you know it is like and again clothing has been a big part of human history for a long time it's yeah. it is the most clear way of self-expression we've devised as a species because mm -hmm. we we don't really ex express ourselves in more ways than with what we wear it is the first thing people See, see like, and unfortunately judge you on but like that's that was the whole premise of a lot of things for mm -hmm. me when i was taught by my my dad was the first person to like bring this as a awareness to me it was like he he told me like the first thing that anyone sees of you is like the way you look as a person and then also what you're you're wearing so like to be presentable in that aspect is what like if it sounds very vain to you i'm sorry but like it's it matters a lot you know like it, like no matter what context you're in, if you're in like a job interview, you obviously have to like dress the part to that right. in order to like get the position, you know, or like it's not a bad thing to have standards, know, you know, like personal so, like, hygiene yeah. and like a, a just it's again, like societal it, norms, you know, but like you take it on your own terms. So, yeah, yeah, and it's so. also it's like at a certain point you have to kind of grow up and be like, yo, this is the game we're playing. Yeah. Like people will judge you off how you look that's like i'm big with tats you have to get in where you fit in exactly and like like i was saying I'm, I'm, i like tattoos a lot mm -hmm. there's a reason i don't have face or neck or hand tats yeah i know the game i'm playing yeah. we have to like be real here like it's not it obviously it'd be great to live in a utopia where like everybody gets to be themselves but and we're not. you don't have to worry about you know any type of societal norm and all that but I would venture to say most people wouldn't actually want a world like this because no. that's more or less in a lot of ways is chaos and most people like order most yeah. people are not for chaos no. i'm sounding like a batman movie all of a sudden <laughs> i don't know why it went to that but yeah like i feel like yeah order you know order. the the older you get the, the more you get into like kind of a routine and you know it's yeah. like you, you refine yourself you know yeah. Yeah. You, it's kind of like less wasteful it's that whole um you know why uh, like Steve Jobs used to always wear the same thing. Yeah. Zuckerberg, yeah, yeah. It's the, like they don't have time to waste. They they, they have other decisions to make. Morning, same thing. So it's about streamlining your shit and like understanding what matters to you. Mm -hmm. Like being clean, presentable. Like that will literally open doors in your life. Yeah. This is just the fact, you know. It's it's. And add it, a whole position for me. And, and what I'm saying is, now, yeah, right? and and do it your way. Like be present, be whatever you find is presentable, because yeah. that will lead to the door that opens being right for you. Exactly. You know, but you still have to be the best version of whatever it is you want to be. Yeah, it goes to stand hand, out. Yeah. You know, it's like I don't care if you want to be literally whatever you want to be. Just try to be the best version of whatever that is. That's well said. To me, that's all that matters. Well said, like after that, fuck the norms. Fuck all that be yourself for real that's it but the best version of that Respect. you know how do you feel about uh, wrapping up soon i feel like we've been almost on for an hour right. more or less but yeah so how do you feel i feel like we've because we had an extra subject but i want to save it because i want to get a bit more like we'll save it meat and potatoes get, with that yeah, one we'll get dive but in uh yeah we didn't mention it at the beginning so i want to mention it now big big thank you to the tragic studios, tragic studios as, as always. always appreciate you guys like Hold uh is there anywhere that they can reach you if anybody needs a studio? Is there the bookings now? Should the we schedule? 
Wait, is that T- TBD? Or is that DM? TBD. Just TBD. everybody follow Tragic Boy J. Yeah. Tragic Studios. Website's going to be up soon, so you guys can book your studio times. Big eventually. things coming. Big but things always coming. huge thanks to them, him, yeah. Emmanuel, everybody, the whole team. Appreciate the guys. Very, very much appreciated. Thank you to you, Kyron. Of it's course. always fun. Thank you to you, Remy. Thanks to everybody that's watching and listening. Yes, sir. Couldn't do it without you guys. Comment up. Yeah, love hearing really. from you yeah, because we touched a lot of good subjects. I really wanted to hear people take on the whole uh, thrifting, mm-hmm. um, and also I want to know what people think about the the fifty. Yeah, obviously everybody would grab a pair for retail. <laughs> yes, yes, more than that. Let's exercise, you know, deeper thoughts, the brain power. But yeah, thanks. Thank Follow you, everybody, us on for both listening. Our Follow socials. us. Where they can get? Where can can they get you? Uh, G O T S W E I G E is my Instagram, and you guys are watching the YouTube channel or listening to us on the apple apple spotify spotify this and that. You, baby that's about it all right you can find me at rems of on instagram get my numbers up i never do this but come on now come on man pump Let's up this it. man numbers right quick you know yes sir that's it and we're, we're out, out. Peace. peace